Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode exploring the Cornerstone External API. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to allow front end interaction with your API with something like Gravity Forms. So without further ado, let's dive in. So here, as you can see, we have found an API that we are going to leverage. This is via the whoisxmlapi.com folks who provide a wide swath of domain data. And as you can see, we've set up a test account with them here. And if I go into the back end, you'll actually see a listing of all of the various trials we have to all of their different APIs. Now, the API that we want to access in this case, we want to look up subdomains. So we're going to go and use their subdomain lookup API and check their documentation. And you'll actually notice, and this is one of the reasons I really like this API, this is a great place to play around and get started because it is a very simple API. You'll notice we have a single endpoint with the API key attached as a parameter to that endpoint and if we scroll down there's only three parameters that we're playing around with and one of them we're not even going to touch so there's two required parameters api key and the domain name that you want to look up so this makes this a very nice easy api for us to work with now to get things started we need to whitelist or allow list our api domain so let's go ahead and just take the first part of this here all the way through the v1 we'll go ahead and copy that we'll jump into the back end of wordpress here go to cornerstone settings and scroll all the way down to the bottom here under advanced where we have our external api now if you haven't already done this we need to go ahead and activate the external api but once that is done we can click on configure we'll scroll down a little bit further and you'll see we have our allow list here and this provides an area for us to include domain names that we want to approve for use on our site so in our case we're going to pop in the subdomains who is xmlapi.com forward slash app forward slash v1 Go ahead and click update and now we can begin building things out now first things first we want to create a form field that our users input a domain name that they want to look up data on so let's go over to our forms here we have gravity forms installed click on forms click on add new click blank form and we'll type in subdomain lookup we'll click create blank form and this is going to be a super simple form we're not going to use a url field because that requires all of the prefix information on the domain we want it to be a clean domain so we're going to do something like this here just a text field and we'll type in domain name and then our submit button we'll click on that click appearance and I just want this to show up at the end of the last row and we'll click save now we can jump into cornerstone so let's jump into cornerstone here and before we do anything let's go ahead and jump into our globals scroll all the way down to the bottom where we now have global endpoints for our APIs and we'll click the plus symbol now we can give our API a name so we'll call this subdomain API we can include an endpoint which is going to be uh, in our case the same thing that we included on the allow list so we'll go ahead and put that in here and let's go ahead and just stretch this out a little bit so we can see what's taking place. So we have our endpoint included in here all the way up to the V1. But we know from the documentation here that we also need to include a parameter for the API key here. So we're going to set that up globally by going back into Cornerstone here. And under our request attributes, we're going to add a new attribute. We'll name this one API key just as they had it in the docs. And then we'll paste our API key in here. And I could just copy it right here. But let's go ahead and go into our my products, grab our API key. And then we'll go ahead and jump back into cornerstone here and paste that into the value field now i'm going to set a cache time on here of an hour again you can always set whatever you want but i have limited requests here on the free version so we're going to go ahead and do that and we will save now we can get into the fun stuff here so let's go ahead and shrink this back down and let's begin creating our new page we'll just call this page our subdomain lookup and we will set it from draft to publish so what we're going to do now is say that we want to start from scratch so let's go ahead and click on that we'll just set up a column here and what we want to add in is our api tester element so we'll go ahead and drag that out here we'll click on the outermost container click customize scroll down to the looper provider and change this to our external api global and from here we're going to select our subdomain api from the api global drop down here we don't need to specify a path because all of that has been specified in there but what we do need to add is an additional attribute here and that is going to be for the domain name and we know that because in the documentation they have domain name required here as well so we'll go ahead and grab that we'll jump back over to cornerstone here we'll click plus under name we'll add domain name and then because this is the api tester we're just going to add in a fixed value here so we'll type in google.com but we're going to make that dynamic in the future and as you'll see things are populating here on the right hand side and that's great we'll actually see there's over 10,000 values here uh let's actually find a domain that has a smaller number of values let's go ahead and do tesla.com 
This one has something like 467. That's probably a little bit more manageable for us to scroll through and look at here. So let's go ahead and begin building. We're going to add uh, two more sections here. Now, in the first section, we're going to add our form integration element. And within this element here, we're going to select our gravity form that we had set up right here. And that'll begin piping through. Now we could get into styling. We're not going to do that right now. So this is just going to look like whatever it looks like here. Now in our second section here, this is going to be where we set up our looper provider. So we're going to come in here, click on row, customize looper provider. We're going to basically do what we did in the API tester, external API, subdomain. We need our request attributes plus domain name but now instead of typing in google.com or tesla.com we're going to click on our dynamic content here type in parameter and select query string parameter and the key is going to be domain click plus and now we should be in pretty good shape but if i were to consume this you would notice it's not working and that is because we also want to specify a data key of results dot records because we want to access the information that's housed within records so in our data key here we're going to type in result dot records now on our row let's actually add another couple of columns here and we'll just see if this works we'll add a headline and let's go ahead and pull in our looper field so we'll say looper field key we're already specifying results dot records so the key is just domain in this case because we want to pull through the domain name so we'll go ahead and click on that and let's go ahead and click on consume and theoretically that should be working but remember we're using uh dynamic content here and so there is no url so here's what we're going to do uh, let's go ahead and jump into our dynamic content URL. We'll copy this to our clipboard and we'll just type in tesla.com. And immediately you will notice that domains start populating in here 457 plus. Now we're also going to grab this headline. We're going to jump over here. And instead of just the domain name, we now want to also grab the first scene. And this is a date. So we'll type in type equals date. And immediately we see dates popping in here. And then we'll go ahead and copy that one and jump over here. And this is our last scene. So we'll come in here and we'll type in last scene. And so this is when the subdomains have been detected. And that's looking pretty good. And then the final thing that we could do here is click on our row and just add a little bit of styling to this row here. Let's make this row clickable. So we'll add an A tag to the row. And under our URL here, we're going to grab our looper field key domain plus and we'll just open that in a new tab and that's looking pretty good so let's go ahead and get rid of our api tester here the last thing we need to do is jump back into the back end of wordpress here jump into forms and under our subdomain lookup form we want to go into confirmations and we want this to actually redirect to a page that page is going to be our subdomain lookup page we're going to type in our key that we had set up which was domain equals and then whatever they are popping into that domain name field Let's go ahead and save. And now the final item is to go back into our looper provider here and set this back to dynamic content, fetching the query string parameter value for domain and add that back in. Let's go ahead and save. We'll jump out to the front end of the site and we'll type something in here. Let's go ahead and type in apple.com and hit submit. And what you'll notice is that this is sending the request out to the API, fetching all of the information in that JSON file, and then sending that back to our site to be viewed right here. And you'll notice we have a full list of subdomains that are registered to Apple. We can then click on any one of these here, and it would open that up in a new tab for us. So as you can see in a very quick video here, we've been able to take a look at how to add customer interaction to your Cornerstone APIs. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. I look forward to seeing what you build, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building!